Why is this site in Texas so important to Starship and SpaceX? No, I'm not talking about Starbase. I'm talking about SpaceX's rocket development and test facility, the most active rocket test site in the world. So how does this site operate and what exactly does SpaceX even do here? Adam and Nolan from NSF hopped aboard a plane to give us an aerial tour of everything SpaceX is doing at the McGregor test site, and it gives some pretty cool insights into the future of Starship and Falcon 9. The McGregor test site, located near the central Texas town of Waco, is home to a multitude of test areas for SpaceX vehicles. Let's start at the small site. This is where it all began for SpaceX. Ever since the early 2000s, basically every Merlin engine that SpaceX has built has been tested here. On the right, you can see two sea-level Merlin stands, then the old, unused Falcon 9 test stand just to their left, and then the still-in-use Merlin vacuum test stand on the furthest left. Today, given that very few Falcon 9 first stages are built anymore, we only really see about one engine test firing per day from this area of the site. And if you want to keep an eye on every test happening here, check out McGregor Live, which is our 24-7 livestream showing every major test stand at the site. Plus, you can even spot the famed McGregor cows. <coughs> Moving to the north, we get to one of the newest test stands, and one that has become incredibly important for Falcon over the past year or two. This is the second stage test stand. Look closely, you can actually see there's currently a second stage in the stand. Note the metal cone sticking up from the top to protect the topmost part of the stage. Work on this test stand actually started back in 2015, before it was abandoned for a few years until work picked back up again. It saw its first tests around the end of 2019, and today sees roughly one test every two to three days. This replaced the original test stand at the small site, clearing up more time for other tests at that site. Now, this stand is especially important to watch because it shows how quickly SpaceX is building these second stages. They hope to fly 148 times this year, which is an incredible number, so we'll need to see around three stage tests per week from this stand alone. That is an incredibly fast pace. Next, we got some great shots of the central site. This is where a lot of the fun stuff happens. Let's start in the middle here with this giant open pit. This is the flame trench for the Falcon first stage test stand. On this stand, new Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters are put through their paces. Much like what we see down at Starbase, these stages go through cryogenic proofing, where they are loaded with liquid nitrogen to make sure they can withstand cryogenic propellants. Next, the first stages are loaded almost to the top with liquid oxygen and RP-1 propellants, and then put through a long-duration burn. These get especially loud on our live streams. goes well with these burns, the stages are then lowered to horizontal by this red crane and shipped to Cape Canaveral in Florida or Vandenberg in California. These tests are more rare nowadays, again because first stages aren't made as often anymore, so we only really see one of them about every two months. Behind the stage one stand, we see these two blue structures, currently sitting empty. These are the Falcon 9 structural test stands where early builds of the first and second stages were stressed and loaded to make sure they can withstand the flight loads they would see. These aren't really used anymore since Falcon 9 has more or less finished major development. And on the right, we have this giant concrete structure. This is known as the tripod stand. It was actually built by Beale Aerospace, who first owned the site before SpaceX purchased it. SpaceX initially performed Falcon 9 first stage tests on this stand before moving them to the adjacent stand on the ground. After several years of neglect, it was later transformed into a Raptor vertical test stand, allowing SpaceX to test the newest generation of Raptors in a flight-like environment. On McGregor Live, we sometimes even see gimbal testing on the stand. Raptor's Electric Thrust Vector Control, or TVC, allows these engines to swivel extremely quickly. We 
also get some gorgeous shots of this site from the ground, especially around sunset or when the extreme Texas weather rolls through. Adam even caught some insane lightning behind the tripod last year, and you can find a metal print of this, alongside dozens of others, at shop.nasaspaceflight.com. One very interesting test we saw recently featured a Raptor engine with a deep blue exhaust plume. Now, this might not seem that strange, but remember that Raptors usually have a light purple plume. This blue plume, looking almost like that of the BE-4 engine that flies on Vulcan, actually could point to a major new development for Raptor. Plume colors can change dramatically based on what's being burned in the combustion chamber of an engine. RP-1 will often burn orange or yellow, hydrogen can burn a very light blue, and methane can either be a light purple or a blue. There can be other factors at play here too, such as what material your engine's made out of, if your nozzle is ablative or not, but propellant composition is the main factor that we're looking at here. This new blue plume in Raptor could point to a change in propellant mixture, potentially having less fuel being burned in the engine compared to before, or a reduction in film cooling. If this is true, this may mean Raptor is burning closer to stoichiometric, which could possibly lead to an increase in performance. However, we don't have any official word, so until we do, you'll need to keep an eye on McGregor Live for any further developments of this new blue plume. Before we move on to the main Raptor test site, I wanted to quickly show one more area of Falcon 9 testing. This unsuspecting test area, built on the former launch and landing pad of the Grasshopper and F9R test vehicles, is a multi-purpose area. This sees testing of small pressurized components like COPVs, as well as the landing legs for Falcon 9. We can even see a leg on the stand here, although that leg has been there for quite a while. And finally, what we've all been waiting for. This is the busiest test site at McGregor by far. These are the Raptor test stands. Here, there are four separate test areas to put the engines through their paces. We can see two horizontal test stands, one of which dates back to 2016, and the more recent vertical test stands in the back. The horizontal test stands see more niche testing of Raptors. For instance, Raptor vacuums are only tested on the left, or northeast, horizontal stand. See that Raptor vacuum in the left bay? In addition, notice that piece of equipment just below it. This was used on the center stand to test out new types of concrete, as well as a prototype of the water-cooled steel plate for the launch pad down at Starbase. And just behind those two horizontal stands are the vertical test stands. These were built much more recently, starting testing in around mid-2021, and can support two sea-level Raptors in total. In these recent aerial photos, we can see a new long horizontal tank has been installed, which will be used to hold water for sound suppression during these Raptor tests. Vertical test stands can be preferable to horizontal ones because they more closely resemble how an engine will be fired in flight. Most of the time, an engine will be firing vertically, unless of course it's a Raptor on a starship about to do the classic flip and burn landing maneuver. Overall, we see about two to three Raptor engine tests per day. So far, every Raptor built has made its way through McGregor, and we've seen no indication of that stopping just yet. As Starship continues to ramp up its pace, this site should only get more and more busy. And who knows, maybe we'll even see more Raptor stands being built. If we see anything changing, y'all will be the first ones to know. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned.